Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you all so much for coming and chatting with me about Scrivener today. I am so excited to talk through Scrivener with everybody. I am doing this video live, so if you have any questions at all while I'm walking through this, do not hesitate to comment or leave me a comment in the comment tab and I'm happy to put it up on the screen and discuss it and answer any questions. So I would like to preface this by the fact that I am not a Scrivener expert by any means. I love writing in Scrivener. I've been writing in Scrivener for about three or four years or probably more actually. I think actually more <laughs> closer to six or seven years now. I just realized that's a lot longer than I thought that I had been. I've been writing in Scrivener for a long time and I still don't know all of the different features that Scrivener has. Scrivener is a very powerful tool that is able to do a lot of different things. So I know that there is kind of a big learning curve with Scrivener and it can be pretty overwhelming at the beginning. So I just want to tell you that, you know, I've been using this program for a long time and I still don't know how everything works. And I'm just going to share with you today all of my favorite things that Scrivener does and how I personally use it when I am writing my books. So to give you a bit of an itinerary for this video, I'm just going to start by chatting with you about what Scrivener is. Then I'm going to talk to you or I'm going to show you one of my own Scrivener documents and how I set up my Scrivener documents and walk you through all my favorite different little features that Scrivener has. And finally, I'm going to show you how you start your own project in Scrivener and set it up the way that I do. I mean, I'm just going to share with you what I do. And if any of that resonates with you, you can try it because you can't get better at writing or develop any kind of writing process without lots of experimentation. So yeah, before I dive in though, I, for those of you who are not subscribed to my channel and don't already know me, my name is Claire Fraze and I am an award-winning young adult author who makes videos on this channel sharing the actionable writing tips that helped me make my own writing better. I am the author of They Stay, which is a young adult supernatural thriller that tells the story of a 16-year-old girl whose younger brother goes missing, and she has to team up with some other kids at her school, including the uh, girl at her school that claims that she has the, the ability to see ghosts, and they all work together to try to figure out where her brother is. So they go on this big supernatural paranormal adventure. And... Yeah, it's I it is the first in a series. Uh, the second book came out a couple of months ago now, and I'm currently working on book three. I think that the Scrivener file that I'm going to be showing you today is actually from the sequel to this book. So I'm not going to show any of the actual content, even though I'm pretty sure. So I don't I only draft in Scrivener. I always edit in Word. So all of the text that is in my Scrivener file that I'm going to be sharing today is from the first draft of this sequel. So lots has changed since then. But yeah, thank you all so much for coming, those of you who are here. And without further ado, let's just get started. So this is Scrivener. This is the Scrivener website. This is just their homepage. Scrivener is a word processor and it's a super powerful word processing tool that allows, it was built for writers. So all of the different parts of Scrivener were, I mean, it was developed for people who are writing books. So they have really cool abilities for you to put things into different folders and write different posts like sticky notes and do different things. So it's a very, very cool software. Um, as you can see, it's set up kind of like this. So you can put your different chapters over here and have them in different folders. You can organize everything however you'd like. You can have the main substance of your book here and take little notes to yourself in the margins over here. Um, I, I have no idea what this is over here. I think you can highlight different things also. This is a little, this is the complicated side of Scrivener that I don't fully understand still after using it for six years. Uh, but I, this is the familiar screen to me. You can also write different post-it notes and things. So you can keep all of your information when you do all your research for your book in one place, which is so helpful. And yeah, so this is another page on their website. This is the Scrivener Features tab. So 
oh yeah, this is the picture that they showed before. So you have your manuscript here. This is how you organize your manuscript. You can make notes for yourself here. You can, um, I suppose, oh, oh yeah. So you can switch if you want it to be one giant document like it is in Word. You can have it like that. Or you can go and see everything by in a folder by folder basis which is awesome. And then you have the corkboard feature, which you, ha you have all the different sticky notes and you can outline different things in Scrivener. I've never used this tool in my life, but it's there. Um, and yeah, this is a general, oh, and I love the full screen writing. You're able to make it so that it's like a minimalistic word processing style. And so it minimizes distractions and it has typewriter scrolling. So when you're writing, it will automatically just scroll up, which is awesome. So I love this. This is my favorite feature of Scrivener. And this is why I bought Scrivener in the first place. But I will get into that specifically later. Um, our, oh, yeah, you can also create different maps and things in your story. Um, different timelines and outlines and you can export things directly in Scrivener to be in different industry formats so traditional manuscript formats and anything like that which I do know how to do but I haven't done for a while okay so um, Scrivener costs $49 for a standard license and $41.65 for an educational license, so for students and different academics. I bought Scrivener while I was a student, so I was able to use my student ID to purchase Scrivener. Um, but he, these, this is just the price of Scrivener. Um, and yeah, so now I think I'm going to dive in to, oh, and also, this is important, you can get Scrivener for Mac, you can get Scrivener for Windows, um, and you can get different bundles for both Windows and for Mac. So no matter what kind of computer you have, you can use Scrivener. This is also not sponsored by Scrivener in any way. I want to throw that out there. Scrivener has no idea I'm making this video. Um, Scrivener, if you want to sponsor me, please. <laughs> but um, I just love the software and I know a lot of people on AuthorTube use this software. So I thought it would be helpful to do a walkthrough of how I use it in a very non-overwhelming way because I don't use all the different features. So... Let's see. I am going to... Oh, we got a comment. Hi, Lolly. Thank you so much for coming and chatting with me about Scrivener today. Uh, Lolly says, I've been in sort of a slump reorganizing my Scrivener, maybe able to help me get writing again. Thank you so much for making this video. Oh, I'm so happy that you're here. I have also been in a total slump this, past, this summer. It's just been so hard for me to focus and to write because my writing routine has been all over the place and always going back and like getting really organized and like really making sure I have a routine and everything always helps me get back into writing and get back into that space. So I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm, I'm going to share my screen. Um, I'm going to see if I can just share my Scrivener screen. Um, let's see if I can do this. I haven't actually done this for the word processor before. Oh, there we go. Okay. So here is my Scrivener um, for the second draft. This is like my very rough draft. This is before the sequel to They Stay even had a title. This is very, very early stages. So this is a general, this is what my Scrivener looks like. Like I, this is always the way that it looks when I open Scrivener. And I don't want to open a chapter because I don't want it to, show any big spoilers for my uh, sequel, but we can just use this. So let's let's pretend that this is chap like a chapter in your story. Um, and so this here is, well, I guess it isn't. Maybe I should create a new folder actually. Um, but all these folders, if you click on the folders, you can, or I guess I can click on this one. This shouldn't be a big spoiler. So, if you click on one of these folders, you're able to go into your chapter. So every time you click on one of these, it will open up all of the text that was inside that particular folder. So the way that I like to organize my Scrivener is I make a folder for every single chapter in my book. And then I just add text um, 
elements into that folder. So you're also able to collapse them if you put them all into folders. So you can click these and collapse them and make them very small, or you can expand them and jump into them quickly. If you just click on a folder, it'll take you in there. Or if you click on like a folder with multiple ones, you can click on the different text in different folders. So that's how that works. If you wanted to create a folder, you click on this little thing up here. You can click on new folder or new text. Um, if you click new folder, that will create a new folder. Then you can name your folder anything you want, such as folder. And if you open your folder and then click on this plus button again and click new text, that will put a text document into that folder. Truth be told, when I downloaded Scrivener for the first time, I never watched a single Scrivener tutorial. And so I just figured it out as I was going along. And so some of the habits that I've developed in Scrivener might not be the easiest way to do things. So if any of you know easier way to do things or easier ways to do things than I'm doing things in this live stream, please comment and let me know because I love learning about this stuff. Um, but so I just put you know new documents in here and then I would just write what I wanted to write for the day in these different little text element things. So my favorite, 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 favorite part of using Scrivener is their project tracking feature. So if you click up here onto project, oh, I guess you can't see actually me clicking up there. But if you click on project on your navigation tab right at the top of the screen and you click show project targets, this little window here will pop up. I don't know if you can see it. Oh no, I don't think you can see it. Can you see it? I don't think you can see it. I have to stop sharing my screen and reshare my whole screen so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about because this is the best thing in the world. And if you aren't doing this, then you really should be because it's amazing. Um, I'm going to share my entire screen. <laughs> this might be overwhelming. It's like very meta. Okay, so here is... Scrivener. And so now hopefully you can see this little um, manuscript target thing. I'm just going to check if you can. Yay, you can. And this allows you to set targets for your writing sessions. So let's say that you wanted to, like for, for my whole manuscript, my draft target was 100,000 words. I didn't completely make it, but the story was over. So I just, you know, wrote the end and that was that. I like to try to keep my books around 100 word, uh, 100,000 words just because I think the pacing, it forces me to delete things that shouldn't be there in order to keep the pacing tighter. But for different writing sessions, what I like to do is I like to put in goals for particular writing sessions. So let's say I wanted to write like 1,000 words. Then when I start writing, um, it should, oh, well, this is actually not a part of, if I move this folder into my manuscript, it will count. So then I start writing. Um, hi, I'm Claire, and I'm writing this during a YouTube video. It will count all of the words that I'm writing on there in this session target, and it will slowly fill in this bar as I continue writing. So what I really love to do is I like to set target words for particular writing sprints. So I set a timer on my phone for 20 minutes, 15 minutes. 15 or 500 words in 15 minutes is always what I shoot for. I've been pretty bad about actually making that. So it's more like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So I set a timer on my phone and I set this little project tracker and I just write as fast as I can. And it's so satisfying when you see this bar fill up really quick. I can just copy and paste it so you can see. Because as I get further along in the manuscript, the bar is going to continue traveling all the way across until eventually when I'm done, it turns green. So that is a very helpful tool while I am doing writing sprints, trying to motivate myself to be productive while I am writing. So that is my favorite part of using Scrivener. I can go back now and um, share just the Scrivener tab instead of the entire T of my screen. So you don't have to see my um, behind the scenes uh, stream yard as well. So yeah, the project tracking feature is my favorite. I use that every single time I draft. And when I'm just trying to draft something really fast, it's very helpful to have because it motivates me to write faster and more. And it's also good to be able to track my progress by having full um, set or draft targets as well as just session targets. So if you hover over this up here, 
it will tell you how many words that you have written of your goal. So this is, you know, it's, it's got on the left here, it's your draft target and over here is your session target. So that's pretty cool too. So let me see, what else do I do on Scrivener? Those are like the main things. As is, uh, as there also is on Word, you can just change the margins and things up here. Um, you can, oh, this is fun. You can write synopses and take notes about your chapter here. So let's say that I wanted to say like, you know, in or heading chapter one, the reckoning or the unraveling or something. I can write in here what my cha my uh, chapter would be about. So let's say Susie realizes that she is a vampire and wants to eat her mom. No, I, whatever. Let's just say it's that. And that is the chapter. And so you can write little synopses. If you see then over here, this little icon changed from um, being only a um, part of the text to a little index card. You can go over and <laughs> this is gonna be really embarrassing if I mess this up because I haven't done this a little while. But if you click this, and if you click on your manuscript, it should show you all of your different chapters on this corkboard type thing. Oh, I wonder why um, it's not showing up here. Typically, when you put something, I think in the cork board. Oh, yeah, there you go. So that shows you all the information for that on kind of like a um, bird's eye view place. So if you add another something in here, I think like Susie walked into the room. And like, let's say that that's the beginning of the chapter. And if you click down here, then you can see all the different pieces of text that you've put into a particular folder. So you have your little index card and then you have your actual text. And I think if you wanted to put different pictures or pieces of research or anything in here, then you can keep it all in one place and that would be helpful. I typically don't do just index cards. I don't use the corkboard feature that often, but you totally can. Um, and here, if you see, I'll expand it a little bit. You see that every single chapter has a different um, index card thing. If you click the corkboard up here and you can write in these things directly. So you can write little summaries of like, you know, Francesca realizes, this is not actually what happens in the book, but I'm just making stuff up, that she's in love with a ghost. And then you can sh track all the different chapters that you have and, you know, use that as an outlining tool as well if you wanted to. Or you can make notes to yourself. Like what I really like to do when I'm revising is ask myself what the major like thematic question is of the chapter or like what's the major discovery that they make over the course of the chapter or something like that. And I put I can put it in here. I've done this in previous drafts or I'll say like, you know, question like can Francesca like declare her love to this ghost or is she too scared? Something like that. So then you can make sure that every single chapter that you have advances the story in some way. Or you can write in here like what the major change is. Oh, you can also drag and drop. I think these, if you wanted to move them around. Yeah, if, if you can drag and drop them and then it will move them around over here too, which is very awesome. I don't know what this button does. Let's check it out. Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. I've never seen this before. Um, from the looks of it, it looks like you can set targets for like target words, maybe for particular chapters. Oh, and you can also, oh, that's cool. You can change the status of different chapters. Oh, you can also label them. I've, I've used the labeling feature before, but not in this particular window. But what you can do is I've, I've, I've done this for POV characters before, like I've given different characters different colors. So I can see what the POV breakdown on the left hand side looks like. But what you can do, I think, is if you right click on it, you can label it and you can click on a color. And then that should no. Does that, hmm, 
I'm, I haven't done this in a very long time. I'm trying to remember how exactly you put, I think it has to be label. Um, because you can also add different colors and things. And that should put a little icon or something next to the chapter if you've labeled it a certain color. And you should be able to, there's probably a fancy feature where you can sort things and figure out how you, if, you know, if, if you label all your certain chapters one thing, then you can sort them in into like only seeing one, all of one type of chapter and only seeing all of a different type of chapter. Uh, so that's another thing that you can do. Clearly, I'm an expert. This is like, uh, it's, it's, it's authentic. This is, I'm being very honest about how much I know about this. Um, okay, so this is your general like manuscript over on the left hand side here. And if you scroll all the way down, another thing, oh, I mean, also, you know, you have the trash button where if you click on like a folder, you can like click on the trash and delete it if you wanted to. Oops, I don't want to show all of the stuff and content in there because it's probably embarrassing because it was my first draft. Um, you can also explore, oh, this is cool. This is the minimalistic window. So if you wanted to like write in here, it will just take out all the other distractions that you have and you can just focus on writing in here. So I'll just like copy and paste it a lot so that you can see that like everything that you write, every sentence gets a little bit more blurred out. And then you see how the computer scrolls with the text so that your text that you're writing is always in the center of the screen. I find that very cool. I love writing in here. And then you can also put the little project tracker feature up on the side of the window so you can track how many words that you've written in any particular writing session um, while you're in that minimalistic window. So that is super cool. All right, so another thing you can do in Scrivener is down here. I don't, uh, I do this a little bit. Um, I've put like different brainstorming things here. Like I've made a list of major revisions that I have to do different, like things that I wanted to put in a hypothetical book three, like what I want the ending of the series to be, um, which, you know, might change later on, but you know, different things, different funny line ideas I have, um, all sorts of different, just random things. And I, I think I tried to put them in this folder, but unsuccessfully did so. Um, so you have to kind of drag and drop them into the folder. Um, I think that's the only reason that that folder is there. So, or, ah, I don't want to make a subfolder. So that's, um, generally what, or, ah, no, ha, huh. you, you didn't see that. No, close your eyes. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's generally what the, uh, folders look like there. So if you close the folder, then the folder will disappear. Cool. So. There are some other folders down here that Scrivener automatically gives you, which is or like a research folder. And this is like where I put all of my different notes and things like different revision notes and things like that. Um, I put that in the research folder. But if you go up here and click or this will if you click on it once, it'll automatically make a blank document. But if you click on a character sketch, it will give you automatically a character profile thing that you can put in. So you can like put in your character's age, your character's name, the role in the story, their goal, their physical description, personality, different things like that. And you can fill in these forms for your character if you want. These are pretty basic ones. You can also copy and paste ones that you created yourself or that you found online. What you can also do up here is you can do a setting sketch. So this is also, it's basically the exact same thing as the character sketch, but like for important locations in your story, you can put these in like notes or research um, or in places. You can probably put all of your setting sketches in this places folder. Um, these are the template sheets. They're like stored down here, but it's like quick if you wanted to add them in up top over there. Um, and then I think this is front matter. So these are like the different manuscript formats. So this is like when if, if you wanted to submit it to an agent or something, this is like a preset format for like the industry standard of manuscripts. And this is just generally the kind of how you would want to format it. So Scrivener will do this for you automatically, which is kind of cool. Um, but what you want to do down here, I think, is that you just want to put all of your information in here. So it will automatically put this page onto your Scrivener document when you export it. So, yeah. Oh, another thing you can do in Scrivener, which I love and I do all the time, is 
um, and I, I don't need all those sentences, is that you can make comments to yourself. So if you wanted to comment, you can click up here and you click comment here and you can say like, find a better word. And then that will be the comment. So now whenever you click on that, it will show you the comment. See, it'll come up if you click on it, um, which is cool. I think if you click on the camera, you can I actually don't know what that is. It does something. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what this is. But that's pretty much all I do with Scrivener. You can change all of the different things up here. Like you can change the font. You can change the size. You can bold it, underline it, change which way you want it to go. You can change the color. You can highlight it. I think you can, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how you like pick from a bunch of different colors to change the color, but that happens. You can change the line spacing. So if you want it to be double spaced, you can click that. And if you want it to be a bullet point list, you can click this. So just general style things that you would get in most different word processors. So this here is, I think the export, yeah. So th this is the thing that comes up when you want to export it. This is very confusing. And this took me a little while to figure out. And I also haven't done this in very many years. So this might not be a good thing for me to be trying to show you right now, because I kind of forget how you do it. But what you can do is if you click up here, you can choose whether you want to compile it or how you want to compile it. So if you want it to be you know, to print, or if you want it to be a PDF or a Word file or any of that. So you click which one you want. And then you click which format you want. So if you want like, you know, your manuscript to be in the courier font, like courier and Times New Roman are the general manuscript fonts that a lot of agents accept when they are looking at queries or pages. I don't know if courier is still very, like I haven't queried in a very long time. So I haven't, I mean, not a very long time, but I haven't queried in a little while. So I don't know if Times is typically the more common one. I think it is, but you can, I, I mean, I remember my college professor just only wanted us to submit things in Courier because that's what he really wanted. I really like Helvetica and writing in Helvetica and Arial. Like I always had to convert it to Times. I can't write in Times New, New Roman for some reason. I associate it too much with academic papers, but you can click here, which one you want. Um, oh, it will actually export it in a paperback file too. Like if you wanted to export it like a formatted book, I know that Scrivener does that. I use Vellum to format my actual books that I have up for sale. So I've never done that before. I've only exported the manuscripts, but you can experiment with this and just see how this works if you were interested. So I would click on the one that you want and then you click over here for all the different things that you want to include. This is the part that I would do a lot of trial and error with because this is the part that I always got messed up with because I couldn't really tell like if I clicked that I wanted the folder included. Sometimes I think it would add an extra weird page or like I don't want the different little scene descriptions and synopses to be included in my final formatted manuscript. So I would like uncheck those, but I'd scroll all the way down and just make sure that everything is in there that I want to be in there. And then you can add whether you want front matter and back matter. And this front matter and back matter comes from a folder that's in your Scrivener document. So that manuscript format page that I had up just a couple minutes ago, you would just like click that and then that would be included in your export. And then you click compile and then you choose where you want to export it to. And you click export and then it should export. Um, Let's see if this works. I don't want to overwhelm my computer since I'm also streaming right now. My computer might start crying if I ask it to do too much. Um, it wants me to download all these weird fonts for some reason. Oh, no. Oh, I don't think that you can see the export file. No. Hold on. So wait, I've been explaining that and nobody can see any of that. That's stupid. I'm sorry about that. Let me see what I can do about that. Um, I hope that you're following along anyway and that you can maybe see what it looks like for yourself. Um, if you go, 
I'm I'm going to quickly just show you what I was talking about and how to get there because I didn't realize that you couldn't also see that. Um, let me see. If I share my full screen, this should also help. Okay. So what you do is you click this button here and you get this window here. So as I mentioned before, you choose the format that you want up here, PDF. You choose the different manuscript format that you want, whether you want like Courier or Times or Paperback or whatever. And then you have to go through this on the right hand side and choose all of the different parts that you wanted to include. So like if you didn't want to include the sticky or the index cards or anything, you would unclick that. And then the front matter and the back matter and all that stuff. And then you would click compile. So that's generally what that looks like. Uh, sorry, you couldn't see that. Um, yeah, so that's a general overview of Scrivener. I can now show you, if you're interested, how to create your own new Scrivener document and how I typically set it up. It's very straightforward. This is, it's just what I've been showing you. Um, let me see here. I'm going to open this. So if you wanted to create a new Scrivener document, what you would do is you would go to File and Create New Project, and then you would get this window that pops up. And these are different tutorials that will teach you all about Scrivener. There are a bunch of YouTube tutorials that you can watch. This video that you're watching right now will give you probably a very basic overview. I was lazy and never watched all of the interac interactive tutorials and video tutorials and just learned as I was going. But if you want to learn all the different fancy things that Scrivener does, you can definitely go and look. So I always click on fiction and or actually, no, I always click on. Yeah, well, usually fiction novel and then I click create. So I'll just create untitled. So it's and then it pops up in a brand new window. So this is our brand new Scrivener document. Then you can set it up the way that you want to. So this is just kind of a more simple version of the chaotic one I just showed you. It compiles everything for you in ma the manuscript folder over here. This is the first chapter and this is your first scene. And when you want to collapse it, you click that. When you want to create a new folder, you click this and you can you know label it whatever you want to. And that's just a basic overview of Scrivener. Does anybody have any questions whatsoever about Scrivener and how anything works? Is there anything that you want me to go over? Because I may not know what it is or how it works, but I can do my best to show you if I do know what it is and how it works. So if anybody has any questions, fire away, because I am here and very happy to answer anything. Yeah, Scrivener is fun. I like using Scrivener. I typically draft in Scrivener. I don't know why I don't use it for later drafts. For whatever reason, I just, it's it's easier for me to, oh, actually, I think it's easier for me to work in Word than it is to work in Scrivener when I'm working with my editor. I think that's why, because I use Word track changes a lot. So I moved to Word, but all the work I do on my own, I always do in Scrivener. Unless I'm dictating, and then I will do that in Google Docs, because I like their dictation software. So... If anybody watches this video and has any questions, if they watch the replay and I'm not actually here, comment on the video itself and I will be happy to answer any questions. I am sorry for the technical weird. I don't know why. Like I shared my Scrivener page and every single time I tried to like another little window popped up, it wouldn't show it, which was silly. But oh well, I got around to it eventually. I'm going to go back after this live stream ends and put some timestamps in so people can skip over the parts uh, where I had some technical issues. But if I don't have any, if, 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 if nobody has any questions, then I think I will end the stream now. But please don't hesitate to ask me anything in future comments or anything like that. I am super happy to talk about it. Um, oh, we do have a question. Uh, the question reads, hi, Claire, I have a question. Do you use the character templates for tracking? The character uh, or for tracking well the characters or do you use another tool I'm not sure what you mean by tracking all the characters um when I'm writing outlines I typically write my outlines in Microsoft Excel and I have plot grids 
be my major outline. So I will have all of my subplots on one side or like in one column of my Excel spreadsheet. And then I can track all the different scenes in my Excel spreadsheet where the characters do something. And then I can see everything in the one column and track how they all change over the course of the story. If you're interested in looking at my outlining method. I've made quite a few videos on it. I use an outlining method called plot grids and I've done a live stream in the past all about plot grids and how I use them to outline my books. So I would recommend checking those out if you want to see how I outline or tra track character journeys in that way. But honestly, I haven't used their character templates for very much. I used them once, I think, when I was writing a book in high school because I put all of the different my fan cast like on Pinterest of all the actors I dreamed of playing my characters I would put them in the different character profiles so as I was writing I could jump into the character profiles and then reference the pictures um, but I don't find that they're detailed enough to be super helpful so I would recommend trying to create your own and figuring out what information about your characters is super important for you to know and then putting that information into Scrivener because all the information that they give you is pretty generic. <laughs> so yeah, um, I hope that helps. I do love tracking my character journeys and figuring out how my characters are feeling at all different parts of the story, but I don't do it actually in Scrivener for real. So yeah, this is a pretty basic... Um, use of Scrivener over here. I know some people are really into all the different things that you can do with Scrivener. Um, and oh, good. Okay. Yeah. That's what you meant. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, exactly. They, they're kind of basic. They don't really help too much because it's just like your character's goal for the story. I mean, yes, they might have a general goal, but they also might have multiple goals and their goals may change over the course of the story too. Like, what they want I mean, maybe not the main character if like the main character's goal like my main character's main goal was to find her younger brother and that was her driving force throughout the story but like the love interest's goal can change a little bit over the course of the story so like as different things happen to him so i found it more useful to have a more dynamic character tracking tool yeah um, oh, Evil Cheese says, I love Scrivener. Yay! I'm glad you love Scrivener. I also love Scrivener. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Scrivener, sponsor me. <laughs> you want to sponsor this video? Um, I'm happy to make some more Scrivener content. <laughs> um, Evil Cheese said, on the character sheet, I put main goal and sub goals beneath as chapters go on. Yeah, that's a very good strategy. Um, I think that, yeah, I mean, all characters should have like a main overarching goal. Like, you know, my, some of my side characters, like that main character's boyfriend in book one, like his main goal is to get his girlfriend to open up to him a little more because she's very emotionally guarded and that's his main goal, but he has some sub goals and like the way that he feels about her changes over the course of the story also. So like, it has to be a little bit more dynamic, but that's what I love about Scrivener's features where you can write things in the synopses and notes and things, because you can really track different parts of what is happening to all the characters as the manuscript goes on. But I usually do that in Excel just because I like keeping my Scrivener fairly simple with like mostly just my writing in it. And then all of my planning is somewhere else. So I can have, Scrivener open and then all of my planning open and reference everything at the same time. So that's just how I do it. Oh, Evil Cheese said, I also use index cards. So when I'm writing a scene, I lay out the cards next to me so I don't forget who's there and what their goal is. Oh, good idea. Yeah, I love using post-it notes. I always outline with post-it notes. That's like my first brainstorming thing is all post-it notes and I'll stick the post-it notes on top of each other and create all sorts of different things with the post-it notes. So, no, index cards, super important. All right, well, thank you all so much for coming to this live stream. Um, I hope that this was helpful. I know I said it before, make sure that if you have any questions in the future, please comment on this video, and I'm super happy to answer them in the comments. And if there are just any other writing software things that you're like platforms that you're curious about, I'd be happy to make videos about them. And, you know, I mean, obviously if I use them and how I use them to write. 
super happy to do that. I've done lots of plot grid ones on the past, but I am experimenting with thinking of different things that I can do. I can also learn about different parts of Scrivener and then create videos and teach you how to use them. I should probably learn how to use different parts of Scrivener, but I don't know all of that yet. So it would be a good motivator for me if I learned how to do them in order to teach them. But yeah, thank you all so much for coming. If you enjoyed this live stream, don't forget to like the video and also subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. I appreciate you all so much for coming and supporting my channel. And yeah, I hope you all have a fantastic week. And as always, happy writing.